John and Character presents Dork Tales Storytelling with a Geekish Twist The Prickly Duckling by Amy Thompson Good morning, Reg. This time, I'm telling a story that I think you'll really enjoy. Who oh, is it about robots? Uh, nope. Wizards? Uh, guess again. Sentient boats? What? No. It, is that even a thing? <sighs> well, I've run my list of subjects that I find interesting, and yours aren't on that list, so I doubt very much that I'll enjoy this story. Actually, Reg, this story is about you. I love this story! Well, why didn't you say so? Am I doing something amazing in it? Well, you're just being yourself. Yes, I am pretty amazing, aren't I? <laughs> May I start the story? Well, of course, my boy. Get on with it. Uh, when do I come in? You'll see. Why don't I remember any of this? I didn't sign any waivers. How can we ensure what you say is true? Okay, I'll tell the story and you can fact check. Then at the end, let me know if it's true. Righto. Okay, once upon a time, there was a mother duck who was sitting on her nest, eagerly waiting for her eggs to hatch. It seemed to take a long time, but one day, she suddenly heard and felt a crack. Oh my goodness, it's finally happening! The mother duck stepped away from her nest to watch. Her six eggs were wobbling side to side. Some had little beaks breaking through their shells. Others had webbed toes and feet popping out. But one egg was not moving at all. Hmm, stubborn, no doubt. That one egg was so different from the rest. Where most were creamy white and sometimes blue, this egg was larger, lopsided, and brownish beige. Well, I'll love my eggs all the same, said the mother duck. And as soon as the words left her beak, a tiny head popped right out of the big lopsided egg. That duckling was unlike any of the others in her flock. For one thing, its beak was very small. While all the other ducklings were fluffy and yellow, this duckling was a muddy gray brown with a little pink belly. Oh my. All of the other ducklings looked up at their mama and said, Quack! But the peculiar duckling didn't say anything. Yet. Hm, must have been shy. I cannot say I understand that impulse myself. Uh, yeah. But back to Mother Duck. She was unsure of what to make of her oddball child. So different from his siblings. Instead of hopping into the lake for a dip with the rest... He preferred to roll around in the sand. He certainly enjoyed eating dry insects like his brothers and sisters, but he wasn't growing any fluffy feathers in that gray fur. The other residents of the lake also noticed the duckling's unique appearance and made their discomfort pretty clear. Mr. Frog, with his booming croak, said, oh, This duckling looks rotten. Are you sure he's not sick? And the young, quick dragonfly zipped through the air past the duckling's head and shouted, Hey, you're weird! Well, that's not very kind. I've got some things to say to that bullfrog and bully dragonfly. Yeah, what's worse is that all the taunts and bullying from the lake animals made all of his siblings laugh too. After one particularly mean joke from Miss Muskrat, teasing the little duckling's small beak, all of his siblings began chanting, Ugly! 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 And then cackling with laughter. Uh, do you mean quackling with laughter? Ha! I mean, <laughs> hey, how could you make such a joke? That poor little duckling. He felt defenseless. Seeing no other way for this teasing to end, he decided to run far away. Hm, I don't need you. He honked at his siblings and mother, though it hurt to yell at them. Goodbye, mean lake. And the duckling waddled off through the marshes to start a new chapter in his life. 
Oh, this must be the part where I come in. Was I wearing a dramatically stylish hat that day? I am known for my cosplay, you know. Oh, uh, wait and see, Reg. The little duckling found a new lake with a family of geese and their newly hatched gaggle of goslings. <laughs> I'd wager ten pence that you can't recite that five times fast. Gaggle of goslings, gaggle of goslings, gaggle of goslings, gaggle of goslings, gaggle of goslings. Ha! You owe me ten pence! Now, oh, I don't know the exchange rates. How much is that in dollars? Oh, ten's a big number. Oh, I only enjoy money for its shine. Oh, Rich, I just googled it, and you owe me thirteen cents. Oh, some bet. I'll pay you in due time, my man. For, like, a bite of a candy bar? Yes, but quite some shine. <laughs> anyway, as the duckling approached the water, the young gosling surrounded him. Hi, 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 hi. You're gray like us, 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 us. What? Ducklings like me? The duckling thought. The father goose swam up to greet him. Honk, honk, honk. Are you all alone? You're welcome to swim around with us. <laughs> wow, said the little duckling. Maybe I'm not a duckling after all. Maybe I'm a gosling. And one day, I'll be a goof. He gleefully followed each of the little gray goslings who plop, plop, plopped straight into the water, gliding effortlessly across its surface. But the little duckling lumbered a few steps and face-planted with a big splash. <laughs> he spit out the lake water and lay shamefaced in the sand. I'm sorry, little one, but if you're not an Olympic gold swimmer, you may not be a baby goose. Don't be afraid. Just try something else. Goodbye. Bye, 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 bye. Then Father Goose and his little gaggle of goslings, humph, glided gracefully, g, 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 lost for a G word, g away. The gaggle of goslings glided gracefully, go away. Oh, good golly, that was a great go. Gosh, I don't know how to stop. Okay, now, now we'll stop. Here, back to the story. Gladly, hey. Uh, g -g -g get over it, good chap. <laughs> uh, when do I come in? <sighs> okay, Reg, you win. Keep listening and you'll see. So the young duckling, er, creature, was left dejected on a new beach. He didn't know what to do. He set out on a journey to find his next home, waddling, no, uh, galloping away. Maybe the next place I find will feel more like home. Was he really galloping? I just wanted to find another G word. Oh, Jonathan Tut Tut. <laughs> anyway, our young friend made his way to a big red barn. Inside the barn was a family of chickens. The mother hen and father rooster ran up to him. B -b Who are you? They asked as they and their brood of chicks pecked seeds from the ground around him. Buck, 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 I, I, I don't know. I'm me. Maybe I'm you? Was the duckling's reply. The five little chicks were pecking closer and closer to his feet. Buck, 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 one missed the floor and got his pink little toe. Well, if you're a chicken, do you want some scratch or not? Chickens and people often call seeds and grains that chickens eat from the ground scratch. Hmm, I'll politely pass, thank you. Yeah, so did our friend. He also didn't like what happened next. The whole family cornered him in a circle, probing him for information. Well, what do you like to eat? And, what's wrong with your beak? Do you always walk that way? Where are your feathers? Where are your wings? You don't have any wings! He doesn't have any wings! Oh, what foul creatures! <laughs> Get it? Foul? 
because they're chickens. <laughs> that was pretty good. But this barrage of questions wasn't very fun for the poor, quote unquote, ugly duckling. <sighs> Nobody understands me. I'll never fit in, said our hero before running out the barn door and bursting into tears. He didn't know where to go or who he'd ever relate to. He also didn't want to cry out in the open next to a farmhouse, so he ran, flapping his thin, pink, and fuzzy, not-at-all-feathered wings. He waddled across the icy front yard of the farm until he reached a dirt road. A big, dusty truck rattled past, and a booming voice from inside chortled, <laughs> Lee, that's one unfortunate looking critter. <laughs> the duckling sobbed by the side of the road. Oh, I'm not welcomed by the ducklings, and I don't look like a goose. I'm not a chicken. A farmer would be embarrassed to be seen with me. I can't even fly across the road. He blubbered and flapped and waddled through the dirty puddles all the way over to the other side. Ooh, 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 I have another joke. <laughs> I just learned this one. Why did the not chicken cross the road? Ugh, I don't think this is the right time for that, Reg. To get to the other side. <laughs> and that's what he did. Uh, but why haven't I arrived yet, Jonathan? Where was I? Well, we're getting there, Reg. Our tiny friend was so upset, he wasn't watching where he was going. As he exited the road, he stumbled under a bush near a mailbox and straightened to something with a thump. Was it the base of the bush or the mailbox? No, he ran straight into another creature. Oof! As both creatures sat up from their tumble, our duckling friend noticed some familiar traits. <gasps> Your beak. My what? You have a, a small, twitchy, ugly beak like I do. I beg your pardon? The duckling noticed that the stranger had four plump little babies behind her. I, I'm sorry for interrupting. My, your children are, are quiet and polite. Well, I'd insist so. My children are always best behaved. <laughs> now, who are you, and why have you run to my home? To insult me? Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry. He became aware of his mud-covered feet and frazzled appearance. He started to wiping himself clean, and the strange creature gasped. I'm not quite sure, but I think I'm a very ugly duck. He rubbed the mud off one wing, and then the other, and moved on to his back. Oh my! You're not a duck! That's what the duck said. Then I thought I might be a goose, because I'm gray. Then a chicken, because I sort of like grains and seeds. But I didn't seem to fit in anywhere. I know I'm too ugly and weird to fit in with your family, so I guess I'll be going. He was turning around to leave when the creature interrupted him. Oh, wait! Of course you're not a duckling, nor a goose, or chicken. Those aren't wings, my boy. Those are spines. Spines? Yes, you're a hedgehog, just like me. Take a look at your reflection. Our little friend was confused. The two creatures waddled over to a puddle and peered in. To his surprise, the duckling, uh, hedgehog, had done quite a bit of growing on his adventure from pond to pond to farm. He barely recognized his own reflection. Where he once was covered in a little bit of fuzz, our new friend now sported thick fur and brown and beige spines poking out of his back. A hedgehog? 
he was a hedgehog the entire time. All of those animals ridiculed him for being different, and now he found a family where he fit in. Exactly. As a baby, he must have simply been curled in the duck's nest because she was so warm. As the mother hedgehog looked him over, she said, My, my, your quills are so beautiful and sharp. I've never seen such a hedgehog as you. And in that moment, after that compliment, staring at the mother hedgehog and all of her little babies, the little hedgehog realized he wanted to live alone. Alone? After all of that? Yep. As soon as they mature from their mothers, hedgehogs tend to be solitary creatures. Oh, that's absolutely insane. Well, don't you like to live alone, Reg? Well, I... I suppose I do. Oh, yes, I suppose you're right. I am a solitary creature. But, Jonathan, where do I come into this tale? Reg... It's about a hedgehog. You were just like the little creature who grew into a beautiful best version of himself. Didn't you notice? You're just like the main character. Hmm. A bit anticlimactic. But you know what, Jonathan? I see what you mean. I always knew there was something I liked about that creature. He's not ugly after all. He's magnificent, like me. So, did you like the story? It wasn't about robots or wizards. Why, yes, Jonathan. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Not ugly or boring, just learning to be yourself. Well, I'm the best, so stories about me are also the best. <laughs> yes, that must be it. Until next time, Jonathan, I'm going home to be with my favorite hedgehog. Me. <laughs> okay, Reg. Until next time. This has been a John in Character production. Today's story was written by Amy Thompson and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Studio Circle Recordings. For more information about this episode, go to johnincharacter.com. Oh! And if our storytelling brings you some joy, and a few laughs, we'd be so grateful if you'd help us live happily ever after by writing a review. It's one of the best ways for others to find our geeky tales. But before you go, please hit the subscribe button so future episodes will automatically show up in your podcast library. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time.